So this is a dog that, um, as you can tell, he's very, very crazy on the leash. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a post with myself to basically let him know his crazy behavior can't advance his, his movements out the door. Um, so I'm doing the best I can to not reward him for anything under this state of mind. Um, I'm using a little bit of food to uh, get his attention. <clears throat> Good boy. Yay. But as you can tell, he, he gets very nervous on the leash. Um, it's probably a genetic thing, because uh, he's a younger dog. Um, first time handling the dog, I can tell you that lack of structure. Obviously, the handler doesn't matter. We're going to go right out the door no matter what. Um, that's a problem. So he has no, no idea that I'm actually the one that turns everything on and off for him, which is a concern for me. <clears throat> that's why I, I say it's very important, guys, when you're at home with your dogs, to like look this dog has has no intentions of taking any direction from the person that actually feeds um lets him out controls everything good boy um and so that's a problem that's a structure thing and that's what i what i find a lot of people are having issues with their dogs is because they don't have a, a good relationship this isn't really about training this is him barreling out of the crate dragging me out um pumping his brakes pumping his brakes Jumping up, trying to slip the trying to slip the collar. He's nervous. He's panting, um, and so I have to gain control of, of the situation in order to tell him that things are okay. Because uh, you don't want a dog like this to take the steering wheel. That's like giving a neurotic ten-year-old hyper on candy the steering wheel of a bus. Uh, it's a really bad idea. And so you get the anxiousness, you get the pacing. And what this is to me is what I'm seeing is, is a dog that just has no direction, no structure, no leadership. Um, he's just alive. He's eating, he's pooping, he's peeing, he's drinking water, but he has no job. Um, he might be loved and he loves other people maybe, but he doesn't like other dogs. Obviously, uh, for obvious reasons of him just having no structure. So imagine him seeing another animal with the confidence that he has in the handler, like myself and the confidence that he has in himself. And that's where a lot of people have issues with German Shepherds. Um, is number thing, the number one thing I, I personally believe is breeding. Um, but as you can tell, hey buddy, as you can tell, like he's a sweet dog, um, but he doesn't have, he's, he's almost like in a fight or flight. So if I entered another dog right now, he'd probably lose his mind because he's so insecure, not only in himself, but in the person that has him on the end of the leash. He should be, hey man, what do you want to do uh, type, type of dog right now? Um, and so what I want to do is, is kind of try to get his attention. So obviously there's a lot of videos that I do with, um, I'm a balanced dog trainer, so I use rewards, um, right? I've been almost 100% positive with him so far. I haven't really given him any aversive negative things except stopping him on the leash and not letting him go outside. Um, but this is, this is one of those situations where when I post a video, um, when you guys see me working with a German Shepherd, and then you see the after thing, uh, and I use a prong collar on a dog, <coughs> um, there's a lot of people who will say, uh, use treats, use, use a harness. This is, none of these things are gonna work. Um, I could get his attention with the food, sit. But as, as, soon, as, as soon as the food disappears, so does he. Um, so I, I do agree that I would like to train dogs 100% positively, but it's not realistic. It's not fair to him to have me uh, run around the room with food and, and try to get him to, to do things that I want him to do, and I know it's not gonna be quality. I really need his attention. I need structure. This dog needs structure more than anything. I can't tell you how many dogs have been euthanized from this behavior, because on, a, on an ongoer standpoint, this is an out of control dog, but for a professional or anybody that's familiar with dogs or German Shepherds, this is a dog with lack of structure. He's um, just came into our board and train program. So I'm gonna do this, not live, but I'm gonna do this live right now, which try to not do any edits and bore you guys with everything and just show you the process 
of exactly how to fix this behavior, but before I do that, I want to go outside um, and I want to see how he does outside. It, it's going to go one way or the other. He's either going to be worse or he's going to be a little bit better and have his nose to the ground. So interesting, do you see how he keeps coming back for me for food? That's good, I like that, but I also, oh boy, good. So watch how, watch how much he actually has with the food here. Watch his intention, so there. So see how he checks out really quick? See, checks out, boom. If he was really driving and pushing into me and doing all this stuff, I'd be off to the races being able to, yeah, so he doesn't care about this that much. He's like, so what he's doing is he's coming up, he's sniffing the food, he's licking it, yeah, 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 great, okay, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. So for anybody out there that um, doesn't agree with tools, um, I'm not, this isn't the only way to do things. I'm just gonna show you the quickest, most efficient, most humane way. I don't want a dog in this state of mind for more than they have to be. And it's my job to get him out of that state of mind, to get his attention and to calm him down. And so I just wanna be clear that the food is present and he checks out really quick as soon as the food disappears. He's done right there. He's not, he's not in, in the food, good. So he needs mental, he doesn't need food. He's not, he's not a food driven dog. Um, every dog is food driven, but he's not gonna work for that. He keeps checking out and yeah, choking himself. He's really stressed. I don't like any dog like that. I think it's, I think it's inhumane to not immediately help this dog out as soon as you possibly can as a professional dog trainer because every second and every minute that you have this leash that he's um, uncontrolled and insecure and nervous and reckless and hurting his trachea and getting nervous and spinning around is every minute is counting towards uh, negativity and I don't want any of that. So I'm gonna go outside really quick and see how he does. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. See, this is a lot of nervous energy here. A lot of, as you can imagine, you can see how this dog would be a bull, uh, a bull in a china shop. Um, but he has just, there's no, dis look at this door. He has no regard for me, right? He's, there's no permission. <clears throat> Good, okay, let's go. Good. So remember I was saying his nose could be down, which is good. That means he's not crazy, but he's sniffing a bunch of pee. I'm moving away from this for a second. Guys, I want to show you what's happening right here. He's getting into fight or flight, which is really dangerous when you're dealing with a dog who's unfamiliar with this place, which he is. He wants to run. If I let him go right now, or if he got away, there's cars passing. Um, he doesn't know where he's at. It could be very dangerous. I need to gain control over this situation as soon as possible before. So watch here. See how he's trying to slip his collar? If he does that, he could die, period. So it's important that you guys have to understand that this dog, yes, he's nervous, but he's nervously uncontrolled and he has no idea that I'm actually trying to help him. And so I don't want to, he's calmer now, which I am, am really surprised by. Come here, buddy. Good. Boom, checks out. So Taylor, why don't you turn around and get his fit right here. Watch. Guys, guys, guys. I have food, I have beef, beef liver. He checked, boom. He's not interested. It's not gonna work, okay? I wish it would. If I can whip out a piece of food and this dog's behavior change, we'd be off to the races and I probably wouldn't have a job because it'd be that easy, but it's not. Okay, so see how he's really trying to get, he doesn't know where he wants to go. So I'm actually gonna follow him. dog, any dog, puppy, older dog, troubled dog, um, I want them to, to have a relationship with me. That's what, that's why we have dogs. We don't have dogs to have them on the end of the leash and be a pole on rollerblades. That's not, good boy. That's not what, what we have dogs for. We're there to have a relationship. And when you're bored and trained, it's exercise, it's mental stimulation, go back. Hour later, pop them out, do it again. And just having these reps of work and play, exercise and all that stuff. Um, and that's really what I'm looking for in, in any dog. But right now he's in such a fight or flight mode um, and I can't get his attention with anything. Um, I, could, I, I've tried, I could try a ball, um, but I doubt that that's gonna work. But I need his overall 
I need him, okay? And I don't have him right now, obviously. It's very clear that this dog has no, no, no regard to me. If I put a harness on, it would be a hundred times worse. If I put a slip collar on, he'd be choking himself out. He's still unsure. So I want to just put a uh, prong collar on really quick. See if that helps. So this is a Herm Springer 2.25 with a clip, which means it buckles together so it's really easy to put on and off. And right now, guys, this is live. No editing. This is, this is exactly what I would do in a, with a dog like this. And I want it, it, it may not work. It may work. My gut tells me it's gonna work um, because this dog's like, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? I, who's in charge, who's in charge, who's in charge? And the prong collar isn't intended for, the prong collar isn't intended to, to hurt a dog. Um, they're not spikes, they're not sharp. They're just fully around this dog's neck. So instead, before when he was choking himself out, now he's not gonna do that. So before he was really like, my way of the highway, pushy, running through doors. He's gonna argue with me for a little bit, but then I wanna take that moment and that breakthrough of him going, oh, and then that relaxation. That's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna work him for a little bit. Uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I wanna see, I wanna show you guys exactly how I would do this situation to try to help you guys out at home. Here's a come. He's gonna fight me for a while. Good. So that's important. That stop I just made where he lunged and he got corrected for lunging at the end of the leash. That's really big. He's never been corrected in his whole life. So that's like coming in and saying, hey, hey, I keep running out of gas, I keep running out of gas, and the automotive mechanic says, well, do you ever put gas in it? Well, no, well, then you haven't even started. And so for him to lunge at the end of the leash and say, I'm going that way, and for nobody to ever correct that and tell him that that's bad, come on, it's a no-brainer here. And that's what I'm doing with the prong collar. And I, guys, it's been two minutes. See how he's leaning against me? And he's like, okay, it's not, the, I'm not across the bridge. I, I'm, it's not the dog whisperer here, he's not fixed. But I want you to watch his behavior and how it changes after I give him some sort of consequence for his actions of fight or flight and he gets all crazy. And it's very unsafe because there's a busy road right behind us. He's, I'm actually giving him reprimand for his, his crazy behavior. And you'll notice a dog that has no structure and has no idea what to do and who to do it for and all of a sudden gets this, hey, quit the crap, they go, <sighs> thank you. Right, buddy? Well done. Minutes, guys, minutes. It's not miracles. It's life-changing stuff to help you. That's like if we brought somebody back from the time before power tools and we told them to, to take apart this car and we introduced them to a, to a power tool, they're gonna go, oh my gosh, this is gonna make my life a lot easier. Off. Okay, I'm gonna keep working him. Come. It's real deal stuff here. You just watched me take a board and train that we received. Again, we're not we're not out of the woods. He's not fixed. He's not. I'm just saying, now I can actually start teaching him stuff because his state of mind, look, look, at, look at the difference in the state of mind with this dog before. Lunging, jumping, crying, whining. Right? It's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna keep working him.
Yes. Good boy. So a little bit of discipline goes a very long way with an unsure dog. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going back and forth and I'm giving him just the tiniest little pops on his collar to say, hey buddy, we're gonna go this way. Hey buddy, we're gonna go that way. Hey buddy, and I'm rewarding him positively. Yes, yes, good, 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 good. You're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it. Like riding a bike for the first time. And guys, Totally different, totally different. The equipment helped me sculpt this behavior to let him know that there's consequences for his actions. Now I can do obedience with him or other trainers can do obedience with him, but the behavior of the dog has drastically changed from holy crap, what am I doing? What do I do here? To that. Of course he's, I did a video, uh, my last video was, well, look at the dog, he's stressed. Of course he's stressed. He's never been told no in his entire life, which is why he is the way that he was. And so during the process, he's gonna be stressed. A kid going to school for the first time, college, high school, middle school, elementary school, they're stressed, they're nervous. That's a part of life. We can't, ideo we can't have an ideology of like, the dog's stressed, you ruined it. No, I didn't, I helped him. Look at the, look at the difference in this dog's behavior versus before. It's drastic. And we're, again, we're not out of the woods, but now, before, remember I was telling you, I can't, I can't work with a dog before. Stress, trying to lunge out the door, trying to lunge out the, look at him now. Eyes are glazed over, looking straight at me. That's a dog that I can put away and in half an hour, get him back out and, and start the foundations of understanding that, hey buddy, it's me and you not you versus the world because that's what stresses the dog out is they think they have no backup they have they have no help they have no guidance imagine being a kid growing up with no guidance nothing do your homework here's your lunch money nothing that's this dog and in minutes the tool helped me i could have done it without the tool but i can also walk to la versus fly what route would you rather take so i'm going to work him a little bit longer we're going to go inside and I hope this video helps you guys understand that these tools and these types of dogs, at any moment, this dog could have changed the entire plan. He could have shut down. He could have started getting aggressive. He could have started crying and whining and flopping around. I would have switched gears. I would have switched gears completely, right? But I didn't. This was a dog that went down the path that a lot of other dogs that I've worked with have. And now I have... a a more balanced dog. He's not 100% balanced, he's not fixed, guys. I'm not trying to do hocus pocus crap here. I'm just trying to let you know that there's a different way of, of sculpting dogs' behavior with tools. It's an easier, more humane, quicker way to get this dog in a better state of mind. And if I can do it in those easy steps, a shame, a shame on you if you don't. Come here, buddy.